Hallelujah. He has us in mind. Hallelujah. Don't ever forget to praise him. Don't ever forget to give God glory for the things that he's done. Hallelujah. Glory. She would say sometimes in testimony service, oh, 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 what he's done for me. Oh, 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 oh what he's done for me. Oh.
Let's go, stop. Okay. mercy, thanking him for just being that God that we can count on in every situation. Old folks used to say he may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. He's an on-time God. He is an on-time God. If you prove faithful to him, if you stay with him, he will be there. And the beauty of the Almighty is he'll keep those in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. So if the winds blow, and if the waves dash, and if the storm clouds should come, and hard times should fall on you, he will never leave you. And he'll keep peace in your life. Mighty God. Mighty God, there's no God like our God. There's no king like our king. No deliverer like our deliverer. Again, we honor the most high and we thank him for all that he is to us. Thank God for each and every one of you who come out to be in the services. We thank God just for his mercy, truly. If it had not been for him, where would we be? I thank God again. you to care for an envelope. If you want to give through electronic giving, you can do that through Givelify, through our cash app, dollar sign, H-O-G-L-O-C-K. If you choose to give by debit or credit card, you can write the amount on an envelope and uh, we will see to it that that is done and you will get a receipt for what you give. But we thank you for all that you do in the support of the church financially and we're asking you continue to do as the work of the Lord is going on. We thank God for his goodness. I'm going to remove myself and give it to the end of our finance team.
thank God for our offering. Thank God for an increase. Truly, I thank the Almighty for all his many blessings. I stand here today and I thank God. Despite what the world has to say about it, I'll take Jesus for mine. I've tried him. He's proven himself. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Lords. He is a strong tower. He is a fortress. He is a shield. He is a buckler. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So grateful to know a God like this. If I were you, that in times like this. For the signs are evident. Yeshua is soon to come. And the scripture teaches us to make our calling and election sure. We sing a song that says, be ready when he comes. Don't let him catch you with your works undone. He's coming again so soon. Whether he comes morning or noon, whether he comes at night, I want to be ready to meet him in the air. I'll be walking in the light. You don't know the way, he is the way. You don't have the strength, he is the strength. You don't understand, he is the truth. You feel all is lost, he is the light. The only way to get to the Father is by him. I thank God for this young man, anointed man of God, a person that takes salvation seriously. I thank God that he is working here in the vineyard of Lachlan. And thank God him to do some of the things that he has petitioned God for, but I just believe there's more in store. See, I read in scripture where God can do exceeding abundant above all we could ask or think. So we have a petition, we have things we want, but God says, I got more than that. I'll give you what you're asking. I just need to know that you're going to be faithful enough to stay the course and receive the blessings that I have for you. But I thank God for Elder David. I truly appreciate he and all the ministry staff. I'm looking, I think, seeing Lady Evangelist Crawford in the sanctuary. God bless you, lady. Honor you today as well. Taught a wonderful Sabbath school this morning. I just thank God for very supportive and I appreciate it all the help and everything that they do but at this time I'm going to maybe introduce the son that I was in the boat our speaker today the person of our elder David Brand Jr. let us receive him by saying God bless you preach the word elder Brand bless you sir Sabbath. Happy Sabbath.
to all the ministry, all of those who carry the word of God, all of those who have been entrusted with the sacred trust of carrying the word of God. Amen. We thank God for Brother Solomon, St. Rachel, Brother Leah, Brother Asa, our roommates. We thank God for more room. For the roommates, and before I open up the sacred text, I, I do want to give God praise and honor for what he has done in my life and for what he has been in my life. He has done great things. He has done great things, great things in my life, and, and through, through testimony, I have carried the saints with me on my journey, and God done something yet again that I need to tell you about. Um, God is just so good. Um, I set out, <laughs> I set out in 1997. When I graduated high school and I was going to make a life for myself and I wanted to make a life for uh, my girlfriend at the time, this sweet little thing known as uh, Shirley Renee. Sweet little thing. And uh, in 1997, made the decision to enroll at the Ohio State University and um, yeah it was a doozy it was a doozy I was 17 years old uh, fast forward to 1998 I believe that is the year that uh, trouble arrived in Columbus brother joined me in Columbus, uh, Brother Nathaniel Hamner. And from there, it was all downhill. <laughs> I thank God for seeing my brother in the sanctuary. We was at Ohio State in Columbus, and Yeah, wasn't much uh, educating being done. And uh, the Lord had to turn me around. And the Lord literally had to save my life. He snatched me out of the hand of the enemy in Columbus. And I came back home to Cincinnati and I said, I got to get myself together. How am I going to marry this girl and I have nothing to offer her? And I began to put together a plan so I could uh, take St. Shirley and have St. Shirley. Because I know that's what I wanted for my life as a young man. I wanted, I wanted, I wanted to be saved and I wanted St. Shirley. And the Lord filled me with the Holy Ghost in July of 2000. And after he filled me with the Holy Ghost, I bought myself a ring and I gave St. Shirley that ring. And I said, St. Shirley, you need to go ahead and get married. And she was not bashful. She was not running away. And we got married in November of 20. Excuse me, 2000, 2000, 2000. Yeah, that's the one. And I've had to uh, put together a plan to support my family. And, you know, many of you 
have heard a story of me going to school and leaving school and going to school and leaving school and fast forward to 2022, I have three degrees. And through God giving me the strength to get those degrees, uh, he's added letters to my name and I thank God for the strength and the courage to pursue those letters because those letters are yet producing in my life and I told myself that once I was established I would keep my, my eyes and my ears open and about fall of 2021 um, people began to email me and reach out to me and it began to be a chase. And I said, why am I running from these conversations? Why am I not being faithful to what I said I would do? So I began to listen to these conversations and I began to interview. And I thank God that This week, I began a new journey, a new position with Cincinnati Children's Hospital. And I want to tell you how good God is. heard it quoted many, many times. I have been young, but now I am old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. And Children's Hospital was very aggressive and they began to call me. And when I finally sat down and listened to what they had to say, Children's Hospital emailed me, said, David Tyrone, you need to come over here. And Children's Hospital increased my salary. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. They increased my salary by $25,000. That's what God does. That's what God does. Folks out here <laughs> talking about nickels and dimes. Homes. 25K is what God wanted me to have. And I thank God that I have it. And I'm only in my 40s, so I got a ways to go. I already put out there what I expect from God, and he's going to do it. So I'm encouraged, I'm encouraged, and I, I, want, I want to encourage you with the same. This is the season of blessing. And we have signs, we have seasons, days and years. Genesis chapter one, in verse 14, St. Rachel, please come, St. Rachel. Genesis 
Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. What does it say? And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. For those of you wondering, this is seed time. The spring is when you plant your seeds and expectation of what God will do for you. And the scriptures are letting us know that God has made promises to us that these cycles will remain and they will not leave and they will sustain us as he sustains them. Because we read in Genesis that he said, let there be. He said, let there be. And these things are still functioning since the first time he said, let there be. And even tomorrow, tomorrow is the vernal equinox, meaning tomorrow is the first day of spring. And when spring rolls in, I'm going to raise my hand and say, thank you, Lord for allowing me to see another spring because that lets me know that you're still on a throne and you are still in charge and you are still orchestrating the whole world as you see fit. And that gives me hope for my life. It gives me hope to know that there is somebody somewhere who's in control and in life, we, 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 we watch the news. And sometimes watching the news can make you feel like stuff is out of control out here. And we have uh, wars and rumors of wars. We, we know what is going on in the Ukraine. Uh, I heard China wants to get involved. Um, yeah, if that happens, we are, we are going in a different direction. Um, and we could literally see, we could literally see uh, the end of the age. And uh, this week, earlier this week, my wife called me and said, um, yeah, I was about to go to my usual lunch spot, which happens to be the Target on Ridge. And she was saying, yeah, um, my other colleagues all were saying they just came back from there. And this week at the Target on Ridge, there was a, a shooting in broad daylight. And I thank God that my wife was not there. Uh, 
The Lord is good to us. And we say it all the time, from danger seen and unseen, the blade of the knife, the bullet of the gun, uh, spring is on its way. Not only is spring on its way, but in three weeks we will enter the season of the Passover. Three weeks for us to get ready, three weeks for us to begin to think about this special time of year. And we want to make sure that we are getting ready in our homes. We want to get ready in our hearts. We want to get ready in our heads. The Passover is a special time of the year that we should never neglect because it represents so much for our faith, amen. And we simply want to be ready. We, we want to stand in obedience to his word. We want to stand in expectation of his word again excited that these things are continuing to happen to happen and we're continuing to see them we're continuing to live on this earth and witness God's hand and we are thankful we are yet thankful for how he has kept us thus far amen how through this whole pandemic he has yet kept us he has kept us working he has kept us uh, overall healthy, right? I think everybody has had the COVID, but I thank God that we're still here. And I thank God that we are yet pressing on and yet holding on and we are looking for this, this season to come. The book of Exodus. book of Exodus chapter chapter 1 and as we say this is a special time of the year but I want to encourage you that God has already spoken concerning us and concerning everything we are seeing in the earth and because of that we are not afraid we are not going to fret we are going to trust God as we always have, as we always will. And we think about the songs that we sing uh, that we used to hear in the sanctuary. Hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. There's another part that says, uh, build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen. Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1. Uh, begin to read verse 7. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when they're fallen out any war, they join also unto our armies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pithom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the children of Israel were fruitful, and they began to multiply. And they increased abundantly and multiplied. And I don't know about you, but I'm part of the children of Israel. 
it seems the worse the world has gotten, the more the Almighty has prospered my hand. Even now, gas is $4 a gallon. And it's $4 plus, excuse me. And there is a sanctuary full of people. And I know on social media, I've seen people riding horses and <laughs> riding bikes. But I thank God I turned the ignition to my car and it has gas in it. I thank God that that house that the Almighty allowed us to buy has heat in it. I bless God that my children are not losing any weight. They are eating and eating well. And I thank God despite everything that is happening in the world, he is sustaining me. And like I said before, he is yet giving me increase. He has given me increase, and, and I know many in the world are looking for God to do something in this season. They're looking for God to, to calm the crashing of the waves. And the scripture said that when the children of Israel began to be more, they began to look around and say, how can we afflict them more? How can we hurt them more? How can we bring them down more? But verse 12 says, the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. They multiplied and they grew. And I love that scripture because it lets me know that when you have your eyes set on Jesus, it don't matter what's happening around you. It doesn't matter what people are doing. It doesn't matter what people are saying. We look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. It doesn't matter what the world is doing and what they're trying to do, right? Because they will try to push you down. They will try to get next to you. They will try everything they can to bring you down. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And I thank God again for the strength he's given us to see this day, right? I know our, our fathers who are now sleeping in the bosom of Abraham cannot imagine this current world that we face. There is a lot of things angling for our attention. There's a lot of things trying to really distract us from what is happening. And what is happening is God is preparing to return. And if we're not careful, we're going to allow what is happening in the world to distract us from this very important fact that God is soon to return. He's on his way back. And they're trying to get us off the mark. They're trying to... They're trying to get us to not believe God even. And we have lots of people talking about different ways to be spiritual and different ways to be divine. And uh, uh, you have the divine in you and, and all of these uh, new age mysticism. And it's everywhere. It's everywhere. But I thank God for the sacred text. I thank God for the encouragement that I can continue to see, continue to hear in the scriptures to remind me that I am Israel. 
And no matter what happens around me, I will never be defeated. And we, we, we've been taught this story of, of Exodus since we were, before we could walk, we heard this story. But now as an adult, I understand what this story means. I understand what it means to press through adversity. I understand what it means to be mature. I understand what it means to go through hard situations. And I'm encouraged that when we have faith in God, before God can do his part, we must do our part, amen? Before he can perform any miracle, we must be willing to move. And I thank God because part of that testimony was the fact that I had put myself to sleep being comfortable where I was, knowing there was more out there for me, knowing I'm a child of God, knowing, knowing what I even spoke over my own life. And I have to get, I have to, get to that point because my faith says I will. And I'm determined no matter, again, no matter what they do, no matter what they say, I will not be deterred. Here's the proof, Exodus chapter five, Exodus chapter five. Exodus chapter five, seasons, signs, days, and years of blessing. Exodus chapter five, read. Verse 1 and go down to 7. And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a peace unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And they said, The God of the Hebrews hath met with us. Let us go, we pray thee three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do ye, Moses and Aaron, let the people from their works get you unto your burdens? And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and ye make them rest from their burdens. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, Ye shall no more give the people straw to make brick as heretofore. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. Moses and Aaron went in to see Pharaoh. And they said, the Lord said, you have to let us go that we may leave and keep the feast in the wilderness. It's important for us to understand that everything that is happening in the world, we must continue to go through it. We must understand that as it happens, we still have a task, right? Our task is to live and to worship the living God. Even as I thank God for this incredible opportunity and this raise, I thank God that I'm a tithe payer. And I thank God that now that I have more money, I gotta pay more tithes. And I'm not sorry about that at all because I unlock the mystery. The mystery is you cannot beat God given. And the reason I got the raise I got because God has found me to be faithful. And because God has taught me how to be faithful, that's how I know there's more for me to get. Until the day I die, I am going to keep going, Unc. There is more for me to get. Thank you for the push that you gave me. St. Tracy told me, she said, you need to talk to children. And this was some time ago. Yeah, St. Tracy, I hear you. You in the back counting the money, but St. Tracy Children's called me and I said yes. 
Yeah, yeah. I know you missed that part. But Israel had an appointment to keep the feast in the wilderness. This unknown feast, we know it is the Passover. And they were excited to keep this feast because that meant that, according to the scriptures, we're going to put down these burdens and we're going to go and rest and we're going to commune with the Almighty the same way we are excited even now thinking about Passover, not just because we get to be off of work, not for the bitter herbs, which we need to make a petition about if we want to have it this year. But we are excited that we get to worship the living God in spirit and in truth one more time. And the scripture says, Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice and let these people go? The world is not going to be excited to let any of you go. But guess what? You still got to leave. Because there is a season and a sign of blessing for you. And they said, the God of the Hebrews has met with us. See, that's us. We are the Hebrews. We are, we are that nation that sprung forth from Abraham. And we are the people who are expecting the promises of God. And I told you my story not to brag, but to encourage you to let you know what God is doing in the earth, to let you know what God is capable of. And I can remember when I was, uh, when I was being courted because it was a whole courtship. And I told you, they really got my attention when they sent me the email and they put my middle name. I said, y'all ain't supposed to be using my middle name like this. Said David Tyrone Brand Jr. Said, who, who do these folks think they are? And I can remember they called me on the phone and I put it on speakerphone and my daughter Rachel was sitting in the car and she heard the number drop like I did and I just stopped. And I looked at her, her like, did you hear that? And I thank God that I shared that moment with my daughter for her to see the reward of her father's hard work. I didn't have to make that up. She heard it the same moment I heard it, and I know she's going to remember that for a long time. I'm going to remember it for a long time. Right? Because part of the story is, let me get down to it, uh, verse 4, and the king of Egypt said unto them, wherefore do you, Moses and Aaron, let the people from their works, get you into your burdens. Them folks got work to do. Get out my face. You're taking my whole workforce. And the scripture says, uh, uh, we're going to take away the straw and force them to make bricks. And I said, God Almighty, how did they get that done? I don't know, but I know if you go to Egypt right now, the pyramids are still there. And that is a testament to the strength of God's people. That is a testament to what you have in you. You don't know what you can do until you have to do it. And a lot of times we feel defeated by what's in front of us. But guess what? God will put you in a situation and you steal a win. And you say, how, how, how did I get that done? How did I make bricks with no straw? I don't know. But they did it, and them strawless bricks are still up in the desert over there. And that's, that should encourage us. Because sometimes, yes, the world will try to take the rug from up under your feet. And they will try to uh, uh, come against you, and they will try to do everything in their power to discourage you. And I'm speaking from you know, 
the work I do every day and how people can get beat up by life and how they begin to feel like everything is against me, nobody loves me, everybody hates me. And that's a trick of the adversary. That is a trick of the adversary. You have to know who God has made you to be, know what God has put in you, and even if you don't know, do it anyway and God will reveal it. That's how good God is. Because sometimes we feel like, I, I, I'm not qualified, I'm not capable, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not smart enough, but God says, go do it anyway. And Moses was like some of us. He tried his hardest to get out of what God told him to do. Lord, you know my tongue gets heavy. Um, I ain't had my naps. I need my medicine. I don't care what you're saying, Moses. You're going to take them people out the land the way I told you to do. And yes, part of, part of this conversation is you are going to have to work. And as a people, we should not back down from hard work. We should not be afraid of difficult situations. We should not cower when we have to perform an assignment like this. And I imagine when Moses, when Moses was talking to the Pharaoh, he was basically negotiating, trying to get the children of Israel out of Egypt. And then he came back and told him, well, Sorry, guys. Y'all got to make them bricks with no straw. <laughs> I'm sure people were upset with Moses. They probably wanted to fight Moses. But guess what? They got it done. And I'm encouraged to know that whatever life throws at me, God is with me. And God has proven over and over that he can take this, this misshapen ball of clay and make something great. He can, he can do what no one else can do. Psalms 68, verses 1 through 9. his enemies be scattered. I don't know about you, but God is ready to arise in my life. And I hope you believe that God is ready to arise in your life. And the scripture says when he does that, his enemies will be scattered. And God will be praised by us. Sing it to God. Sing praise unto his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, a father of the fatherless, a judge of the widows, is God in his holy habitation. God setteth the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound by chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. See, I told you the children of Israel were set free, and the scriptures letting us know that God is preparing to bring some of us out. He's preparing to bring us out from those chains that kept us bound, 
those chains that were on us uh, spiritually, those chains that were on us emotionally, those chains that were on us financially, God is preparing to release the captives. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of being bound. I am tired of being tired. I am tired of not having those things that I desire. And God has promised us that he is going to do the work. Oh God, when thou wentest forth before the people, when thou didst march through the wilderness, the earth shook, the heavens also dropped at the presence of God. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. I thank God that God is still moving in the earth, still performing his good work towards the children of men, and that includes you. I don't know what you are expecting God to do in this season, but baby, get ready. It is going to happen. The earth shook. The heavens also dropped at the presence of God. Thou, O oh God, did send a plentiful rain. Thou did send a plentiful rain, whereby thou did confirm thine inheritance when it was weary. I'm looking for the plentiful rain. I know I am part of God's inheritance, and that gives me confidence to feel the way I feel. I know God is great. I know God is wonderful. I know God is marvelous. I know in this season, he has something up his sleeve for me. I know how hard all of us have worked, right? We have worked hard to get through this pandemic. We've had to struggle through the loss of loved ones. We've had to struggle. Some of us have lost jobs. Some of us have had difficult situations, but God is promising in this season to return, to give us a plentiful rain. He is promising to remember that we are part of his inheritance. He has already made the promise to us. He told us in Jeremiah, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. I know what I have in store for you. I know what I have planned for you. You don't know, but I know. And because I know, I'm going to make it happen. And I'm going to use people. I'm going to orchestrate your whole life I'm encouraged about Proverbs 21 in verse 1. It tells me about how it says the Lord, it says the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithsoever he will. That lets me know that all of these wicked men in the earth, even some of the good men in the earth, God will use them to bless me in this season because God has made promises to me that he cannot fail, he cannot lie, and he cannot, he cannot allow me his favorite. I'm God's favorite. He cannot allow me to suffer too long. And how do I know this? December. January, February, we had snow and ice. But you know what's about to happen now? Sunshine. You're going to hear the birds chirping. I promise, me and my wife, we sit, we sit, we sit in our master bedroom. And we look at these wild squirrels. All them jokers do is play all day. They run, they chase, they play. And I say, God, I want my life to be just like that. Make my life easy. Make my life peaceful. Give me your good pleasure. Show me how, how simple this, and I'm telling them squirrels, be, 
from the crack of dawn till it get dark, them squirrels is back there playing. And I'm like, God, I, I know, I know you can make life just like that for us, right? Where we are able to just enjoy what you've given to us, enjoy what you have for us. Uh, I think it's Paul who said, I want to live a, a peaceable life, right? Right? I believe God can give us lives just like that. I don't want to live a life of crisis every week. Who wants to live a life of trouble every week? That, no, 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 no. Pretty soon I'm going to go back to Home Depot. I'm going to buy me a new hammock. I'm going to put that hammock up in my backyard. Spring break, I'm going to be in my hammock. After school, I'm going to be in my hammock. Summer vacation, I'm going to be in my hammock. That's what God wants me to have. And it's not asking too much to put my feet up sometimes, is it? It's not too much for me to want to enjoy the simple things in life, is it? I'm going to get my ice machine. I'm going to pour me a little bit of apple juice, a little bit of sweet tea. And I'm going to get in my hammock and watch them squirrels run. And when I'm looking at them squirrels, when I'm, I'm going to say, Lord, I thank you. Because the same way them silly squirrels are chasing each other, you allowed me to work hard so I can put my feet up. You are showing me your promises are true. You are showing me your promises are are real and I you know what I've, I've banked my whole life on what you told me I've constructed my whole life around what you have taught me Exodus chapter 3 Exodus chapter 3 seeds and signs days and years God has already made the promises. We read Jeremiah 29. This is what he said in Exodus to, to Moses. Exodus 3, 19 through 21. And I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when you go, you shall not. You shall not. You shall not shall not go empty. I don't know what y'all looking for. I don't know what y'all expecting. But I need this scripture right here for my life. When it's time to go, when you go, you shall not go empty. I cannot, I cannot really believe that gas is this high again, right? But again, I thank God that I, I fill up my tank. I don't, I don't go to the gas station and put in $10. <laughs> That's not my testimony. And I'm saying, God, I thank you. Because I know some people see $4 a gallon and they say, well, um, I'm not going to make it. I cannot go, I will not go. But even at $4 a gallon, God is good to us and God has made promises to us. And I want you to really think about these promises when you go home and when you land on your couch or if you got a hammock like me, when you, when you relax and think about what God has said to you already. Think about this promise of not going empty. And I want to also encourage you that some of us, it's time for us to move. Some of us, it is time for us to move. 
We have to be ready to move when God says move. And I know moving is not always comfortable. It's not always easy. But I tell you what, I ain't staying in Egypt. I'm not staying in Egypt. The promises of God was a land of what? Milk and honey. Y'all can keep this business of not making, of making stones with no bricks. I'm going for the milk and the honey. Because that's what God told me he had for me. And I'm, again, I'm, I'm hanging on to that. I'm holding on to that. I'm believing that. That's what my faith says to me. Seasons, signs, days, and years of blessing. Now, when we think about that topic, you say, is it, is it really possible that God can give me not just a few good days or a few good weeks or a few good months, but God can give you years of blessing? I'm talking about years of blessing? And imagine if this was just year one. Huh? Did you know David killed all the enemies of Israel? Right? David and his men killed all the enemies of Israel. The result of that is by the time Solomon took the throne, he had 40 years of prosperity and peace. 40! I'm looking for that. I'm looking for 40 good years in a row. 40. Joel, and I just simply hope to encourage you today. Trust God, believe God. The words contained in this book are real, and they are life. And again, a big part of what we do as a people is we tell the testimonies, and the testimonies reveal the stories the stories of people's individual experience with God. And I, I thank God that God has allowed me to be very transparent with you through my journey. And, and you know, you saints have, have been with me from the, well, a lot of saints in the room have been with me before I was with myself. I always joke with Lady Reese and I tell her how we had a conversation one time, and I said, uh, and I don't know what I was thinking, but it was funny. I said, Lady Reese, I thought you was my age. And she said, when you was born, I was grown. But the way our saints age, you don't know, you don't know who is, is 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. You just don't know. And, and they get the living living good and dancing good and you can't tell you can't tell what the ages are in this in this in this camp you just see a bunch of fresh faces and and i thank god for that because that gives me hope again i hope to live a a good quality life like i've seen the saints do before me joel chapter two joel chapter two I want you to hear this really good because this is an encouragement to, to all of us that God wants to do this for us and God wants us to have this. Joel chapter 2, verse 21. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. 
for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. What month is Passover in? Abib. Woo! That rain is coming. It says in the first month. Ooh, we. And the floors, the floors shall be full of wheat. And the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I, I'm encouraged about this, I will restore to you the years, not the days, not the weeks, not the months, the what? The years. And I don't know your story if you feel like you've been down for the count, if you feel like you've been down for a while. The Lord says, I will restore to you the years. And for some, it was some experiences where the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar and the palmer worm my great army which I sent among you and ye shall eat in plenty Woo. ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied thank you Jesus and praise the name of of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed God says I am going to do the work of restoration I am going to make sure you have what you need I'm going to make sure you have more than you need we quote the scripture uh, exceedingly, abundantly, above what? All that we ask or think. And I don't know what your wildest thoughts are about God's potential, but he's going to do something bigger than that. And I do declare in the first month, in Abib, this spring, look for God to do something amazing in your life. Look for God to do something incredible in your life. Look for God to do something wonderful in your life. The floors shall be full of wheat. And I know y'all know the scriptures, you understand the wheat was the most important, was the most uh, expensive crop. So when you see the floors being full of wheat, man, that's a good sign. And the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. That's a good sign of wealth, a good sign of of abundance a good sign of God's faithfulness to you and don't forget God has promised to restore and I, I, I can tell you you know early in my life early in my marriage um, I can remember all the things I could not do right I can remember all the places I could not go. <laughs> all the wonderful food I couldn't eat. Yeah, Tracy. All the cakes and pies and sweets and steaks. 
But now, I find myself having to work out a little bit more because now I'm putting on a little bit weight. Yeah, he will do it. And we quote every week, you'll make fat thy bones. And you can't get fat if you ain't eating. I thank God from where he's brought me. I thank God from where he's taken me. And I thank God for a man of gratitude. Jesus, I will never forget. I will never forget what you've done for me. I will never forget what you've done for my family. I can remember terrible situations, seeing terrible things in my home, things that were outside of my control. But God is restoring. And this is year one of 40. And I'm going to put it out there. It's about to be, it's going it's to be a 40-year streak. You hear me? A 40-year streak. And I believe that because he gave it to Solomon. Didn't he give it to Solomon? Yes, he did. And I believe that the Almighty wants to have us live lives like this. I'm not a prosperity preacher, but I I can read these texts. And these texts tell me that God said, I am going to do these things for you. And God says, I want to do these things for you. And God says, because of who you are and what you mean to me, I'm giving you my promise that this is what's coming to you. I thank God for faithful men and women teaching me the value of hard work. I've made bricks with no straw, right? I thank God for the strength to go through that experience. I thank God for the wisdom to tell the story because my experiences are not my own and we're supposed to share them with every generation. I thank God I have a picture at home of when I got my first degree, I had Solomon, I had Rachel, and Shirley had Leah. And since that picture, they've seen me do it two more times just for good measure. And I know they will never forget seeing their father work hard for them. And I thank God as a man that the Lord has given me strength to run this race. And the Lord has encouraged my heart the whole way. And I believe God is with me. I said, I believe God is with me. And, and, It doesn't matter what you think about me. It doesn't matter how you feel about me. My name is David. My name is David. And God has shown me repeatedly, I am his favorite. And God has told me, he's going to restore the years And I'm looking for all of this to come to pass. And guess what else? When you get up and you give your testimony about what God has done for you, we're going to praise God together. And again, my, my testimony is I grew up, I grew up in this house hearing the testimonies of the saints about overcoming, about the levels, um, One of my favorite, Dr. Hammer said, every time he, Lady May got pregnant, he got a raise. That man had a lot of raises. And I can remember, (laughs) I'm not gonna go there. But 
he had a lot of raises. And I thank God for that. Because as a man, I need to know that these kids ain't free. And if you don't work, how it go, Lady May? You don't eat! And y'all know we believe in a good meal, amen? Amen. I thank God for the word of God. I thank God for all of you. My prayer for you is that God will continue to show himself alive and well in your life in this season. And my prayer for you is as we approach the great feast of the Passover and the feast of unleavened bread, as we approach the first month that God will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there may not be room enough to receive. And this is the, this is the, let me not sit down without saying this. This is what I'm looking forward to the most because I believe just like everything else, this is about to happen. Acts chapter 2. I believe this is about to happen. And just like everything else in my life I've told you about, I'm going to talk about it until it happened. But this is what I believe is about to happen in this house. Acts chapter 2, verses 37, 38, and 39. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of of the Holy Ghost for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off even as many as the Lord our God shall call Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for the house. I thank you for the car. I thank you for the job. Lord, save my children. He can do it just, just as smooth, just as easy as Children's Hospital call on my phone. He can do it. He already said he would do it. So now I'm just looking for it. And I cannot wait for the day when this place erupts, when we hear the testimony, right? So they, would, they would say, you want to give a testimony? And you would, you would gather your courage because a part of you would be saying, I don't, I'm not sure, but you, your faith says, I got to say this anyway. I want to hear, I got the Holy Ghost. when that day comes, there will be rejoicing. There will be singing and there will be dancing because salvation is the most important thing. And if God can save a, a skinny dude in Columbus with dreads, I know he can save my children. I know he can save your children. And it, it is an amazing thing to grow up in a church and to now have offspring attending church and trying to 
make that connection with God. And you look at your babies, and I know why the older saints say, if I could give it to you, I would. Because if I could give it to my children, I would. But they have to meet God for themselves. And I thank God they understand that. They are pressing into that. And just like every other accomplishment that we do, when we get good grades, we celebrate. When we, when we get the, the job, we celebrate. We got the house, we celebrate. The minute somebody get the Holy Ghost, we gonna celebrate. And I cannot wait. Saints, God bless you. We love you. Continue to pray for me. Continue to pray for my family that we would be what the Almighty's calling for in these last and evil days. Pray for the word of God. Hallelujah. Bless you, Alan. Hallelujah. We thank God for the word of God. We thank God for our elder David. Amen. We want you to understand something. The Almighty has made us promises. And we can stand on those promises. Third John. one thing that you want to seek after. The promises are already made as far as the blessings are concerned. God is going to do that. He's going to fulfill it. But you meet the requirements and you meet him for the Holy Ghost. You seek him for the Holy Ghost. You want to have that connection so that no matter what my circumstance is, I understand salvation is mine. Thank God for you. Appreciate the word. Appreciate the word of God. Thank you for taking the time to preach to us today. We thank God for each and every one of you. I want to thank the Almighty for yet keeping me. Um, I don't know, Brother John, are we still streaming? Are we good? Okay. All right. I just, I said it earlier. I just wanted to repeat it. Um, I was sitting over there. It's, as you can tell, a little less light. And um, proceeding with that. Thank God. All it went well, healing well. Thank God for it. Thank you for your prayers. Um, but I, um, my eye is a little sensitive to light, and that's why I have my sunglasses on. I'm not being cool. I just need them on. Uh, I just wanted you to know. But I thank God um, that he has been good to me and that he has brought me through. And I do ask your continued prayers um, through my recovery process. Don't want me straying too much, and that's why. Right this minute, folks. I don't know how. I try, but I don't know how to just stand and stay calm, especially when I think about the goodness of the Lord. And I'm, I'm hearing, you know, I wanted to run when Elder was saying about work and how God has blessed him. I'm thinking new house, new deal. Then we get hit with this, and now the economy done took a turn. But God said, Don't worry about it. I'm going to take care of everything that's being increased. I'm going to make sure you do the same work, but I'm going to give you more money to do it. Y'all don't hear me. Somebody sitting there right now worried about how their money getting ready to work out, and God just showed you, I got the money. I just need you. I need you to stay faithful. I need you to be in the place where I can bless you, doing what I tell you to do, like I tell you to do it, and watch me work because it is our season. They say Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year. I got news for them. They ain't never had a Passover service. If you've been in the Passover, you know that's the most wonderful time of the year. Because when you think about salvation and how good God has been and what he done for us in his son dying for our sins, what a blessing. What a blessing. God bless you. Say, surely, do we have any announcements?
they were even children. To that point, again, we just got back in service, and so uh, if we're comfortable with it, I'm trying to have a church meeting. Uh, really, I've been talking with the trustee board. Uh, we're going to have, uh, hopefully, prayerfully, first Sunday in uh, April, we will have a trustee board meeting, and we'll put it together, and maybe that following, I'm trying to have it before Passover, that we'll have one. I'm trying to have one before Passover. To Lady May's point, we have had uh, quite a space between our church meeting and even our trustee board meeting. Uh, we are in, uh, I don't want to say a bad situation, but we, we're, we're yet trying to get some of the things in place, some of the files that we need to get into, some of the things that we were working on at the law school uh, group with John. Some of those things we just have not been able to access. And it's been a little bit of a difficult transition in doing that. So we lost a lot. We didn't. And, 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 and it's a little more than you would think. Somebody would say, well, is it a possibility of just you know, doing this or doing that? It's not that simple. Uh, if you know anything about Deacon John, it, it's encrypted. It's not as though, and, and I thank God for it, that says that the information what we have was protected and it wasn't going to be hacked and that sort of thing, but by the same token we, we, we lost a lot and we really have a lot that we just need to get into and get on top of and we're working at it. Please understand, we are working at it but um, like I said, you know, we had to uh, close down because of the spike. It changed you know, dynamics of things. Just meeting in general, us coming together, even church different because of COVID and so that was you know some of the reasoning behind not having church meetings and whatnot but we are working on it we will get there I do I pray and I ask for your patience yes St. Joseph
I just have to kind of put together the schedule. Um, we're trying to utilize, with, again, with COVID and not fully being into service, everyone coming, um, we're trying to utilize all of our ministry, and we want each of them to have a uh, turn at teaching the Sabbath school. Um, Elder David is one that will come and do live from the sanctuary. Lady Crawford right now, she is utilizing the Zoom. Minister Berthina as well is utilizing the Zoom. So with their weeks, we will be doing a Zoom Sabbath school. But I'll, I'll, I will get Shirley that schedule. We'll have it. You'll see it. We're, we're getting back to programs, back to announcements, back to having it so that you all can, you know, have that information readily and you'll know. Uh, again, just a little bit of work. A, a lot came about in a hurry, getting started, getting back with the trustee board, my situation here, work situation, it's, it's been quite a bit, just this first few months of 2022 for me, and I'm, I'm getting to it, I apologize, I truly do, I'll, I'll take the ownership of that, but I, it, it will be a schedule, you will know, and then we'll, like I said, for a while, we'll utilize the Zoom, and it's there, and we're going to utilize it for those that want to utilize it. And if, if Elder so desires, he's going to be in the sanctuary for teaching, then fine. If he chooses to do Zoom, we'll do Zoom for Sabbath school for a while. Till we get where things are lifted, we're back, things are better, and then we all are comfortable being in service, being in the sanctuary, and we'll, we'll go forward from there. Lady. No, but that's the only option that we have. I mean, if if if, if I if I've got teachers and and they're going to teach from Zoom, we can help you with downloading the Zoom. It's not difficult. It's a free app. Yes, ma'am. I understand. your point and I'm trying I, I, I tried to explain it up front I want to utilize everybody and we, we really got to give everyone an opportunity to share in the Sabbath school to share in the services and those types of things the last meeting part of some of that in the meeting was stated wanted to hear of the other ministry wanted to hear from the other ministry okay how else can I you know I'm, I'm trying to work with what I have I understand Everybody, just like Facebook, everybody's on Facebook. I understand that, but all I can utilize is what we have, and that's that's what we have. Um, like I said, it, it's a free app. If you if you want to uh, need some help, some assistance in downloading it and actually learning how to use it, we can do that. Just reach out; we'll make that available. But as it stands, that's what we have to use. That's what we're going to utilize. Yes, ma'am. said that I hope they I hope you heard me obviously I gotta give a schedule we'll have it for St. Shirley that will be it here's what it is this week this week this week zoom if Elder David is gonna do live we'll be in sir in the sanctuary live that week and that that's where we are I apologize I, I, I did not mean to uh, overlook anyone or, or anything I truly apologize I take the ownership of that and we will fix that sharing that information. Yes, ma'am, so it's all.
he did. Praise him. Praise him. Yeah, bless him. <laughs> Praise God. Look at God. He's talking to you. Yes. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. Yet another witness that God in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of all the negative, God is still showing his mighty hand. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? God is good. We wait. Acknowledge him. All right. Bless you. May heaven smile upon you as our prayer. Lady Carrie, I think you have a yes. yes. She did. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell it. I wasn't going to tell it. I'll let her tell it. But yeah, he came by our house. Oh, want to do it? Want to do it? I'm telling you, it's the season, y'all. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Just take it like God does it. He wants you to prosper and be in hell as your soul prosper. You've been faithful for it. These past couple of years, you stay faithful, you're praying, you're doing what God said do. Watch him work. Watch him work. Give him space. Yes, ma'am. Praise him.
Won't he do it? Won't he do it? He is that kind of guy. Yes, he will. Yes. That's right. Hallelujah. Come on, let's bless God again. I am encouraged. I pray that you hear God moving. I pray that you see the almighty blessing and realize that you are in the right place at the right time. God to do what he does and he will continue to do what he's doing. Lady Leona, is that your hand up? Praise him. master on 